Okay, let's look at a way to organize some of the harmonic materials I covered last week um, for practical use and how to practice them. I covered a lot of things, but I didn't really show you how to start working them on tunes. Um, we can start with uh, triad pairs, a whole step apart, major triads. Um, and these will be found in any mode of major or melodic minor. Um, so for our example, let's take the first eight bars or so of Stella by Starlight, and I'm going to do it in C major because I'm a B-flat instrument. <clears throat> so the first chord is F-sharp half diminished. then B7 alt, then D minor 7, then G7 not alt, so I'll put a G9 just to be clear to myself, and then G minor 7 to C7, let's make it alt as well, then F major 7 to B flat 9. And again, I use Alt as a shorthand for the seventh mode of melodic minor. Actually, let's go over that. So, over a half diminished chord, I'd usually use a the sixth mode of melodic minor. So this would be A melodic minor over F sharp half diminished. Then I use the seventh mode of melodic minor, the altered scale for my altered chords. So that would be C melodic minor over B. For minor seventh chords, I use Dorian usually. So that's the second mode of major. For unaltered dominance, um, uh, one without an avoid note, technically, is the. Um, let's see, what is it? the fourth mode of melodic minor, which is the Lydian dominant scale, sharp four, flat seven. Uh, I'd use Dorian over minor seventh once again. Actually, these these are all covered up here. <clears throat> so if I'm going to play major triads that are a whole step apart over each of these chords, for the half diminished, if I want a um, natural ninth, over the chord, my two triads would be E major and D major. For an B alt chord, they would be G major and F. For a D minor 7 chord, it would also be G and F. For a G9 without a void notes, you would have an A and a G. Oh, it looks like my pen ran out. thought this would happen. For a my G minor 7, it'd be C and B flat. This pen isn't very good either, unfortunately. And for a C7 alt, it would be A flat and G flat. And for an F major 7 without avoid notes would be G and F. Remember, these are all major triads, pairs, and whole step apart. <clears throat> and for the B flat 9 without avoid notes would be C and B flat triads. So, in jazz, we practice a lot of eighth notes, whether we play as many of them or not. And it is important, I feel. Um, so if you have eighth notes and you're trying to work a harmonic rhythm of a tune, that means you have eight notes that you can play per measure. So we're working with triads, with their which are units of three. And actually it's very useful for jazz articulation and stuff to practice groups of twos and threes. Um, 
but while you're trying to learn the harmonic rhythm of the tune you shouldn't use them as much to go over the bar line just yet so let's look at a grouping that would be that would help us actually learn where the bar lines happen and therefore where the chord changes happen so each of these were a measure each and one way you can split up eight notes is to have a group of three another group of three and then a group of two so one way you could practice this is uh, make the first group of three one of the triads make the next group of three the other triad and then for the last two make that part of your first triad so for example if I was playing E and D triads over F sharp half diminished I could play E G sharp B and then I could play maybe go back back down A F sharp D so E triad D triad and then maybe go down again before I go up and it's good to look at the direction too you don't have to write an arrow but so we went this way then that way then up one more note so this works nicely because then you could do similarly for the next measure so you could do how about not start with the root of G try it but go D B G then a C F and then how about G B and depending on what registers you put each note in um, it could be ups or downs you know this could either be up a minor third or it could be down uh, a sixth a major sixth So again, the grouping would be like that. And while you are hitting beat one of each measure this way, um, it is nice because the accenting that you're doing is dotted quarter to another dotted quarter. I'm writing it out like this. And then that, which is a very popular rhythm all around the world in different styles of music. So so forth in this case we might be swinging it as well this camcorder drives me a little insane sometimes because it doesn't really capture my clarinet tone that well on most of my videos from now on I'm going to try to capture my tone with a different device but for this it's fine um, so let me play these two measures for you. So if I swung it, it might be so usually you wouldn't want to write it out like this what you would do is just look at your little cheat sheet that you made that tells you the triads you're working on and then the chord changes for reference and then just try to put it together um, here's an example see that didn't sound like Stella by Starlight but if you had a um, a little backup track playing or something maybe you could hear it that way in fact here I'm going to play I'm going to play through these with a play along for Stella by Starlight I'm going to play uh, these I'm going to improvise the shapes that I'll play of each triad but I'm going to do a group of three, group of three, group of two, 
of these triads that I showed you for each chord change. So the purpose of this is to show you, teach your instincts when, if you're playing triad pairs, when to switch, when those bar lines happen. Now you can also practice it with groupings where you do a group of three, group of two, group of three, group of two, where it's over the bar line, which is a little bit more challenging. Now one word of advice, practicing this sort of thing of choosing a device or an idea or a melody in your head, whatever, a contour, a shape, a rhythm that you want to play and then wanting to be able to, to produce that sound in the spur of the moment means that practicing it should be like practicing sight reading. So if you try to play this, like I made a mistake somewhere in here, don't stop and work on this spot a lot. That's another way of practicing and I guess you could do that if you're not used to it or certainly go at a slower tempo. But this is sort of like practicing sight reading where you're trying to also develop the ability to just go and, and have it come out successfully. <clears throat> what if we wanted to practice major triad pairs a half step apart which would imply sort of a sound of modes of harmonic minor? Um, well, as I was saying, we use usually A melodic minor over this chord, so now make it A harmonic minor, and this will be kind of a wild sound, because we have some clashes in here. So now it'll be F triad and E triad. C melodic minor would become C harmonic minor, so now we're going to do A flat and G triad. Hopefully you can see that. Then for D minor, it'd be F and E triad. And if you look at that, the only weird note is the G sharp, which makes it like a Dorian sharp 4. For this it would be the same, for this it would be the same thing in this key. Notice also that the, in this case the B flat, tri B flat triad is just the th 3, 5, and 7 of G minor. Okay, then here we would normally play D flat melodic minor, so now it would be D flat harmonic minor, so A and G, A and A flat triads. Then here, you could play. Say if we wanted to play D melodic minor over this to make it a sharp five sound, then we could make it D harmonic minor. So then you'd have a B flat triad which has a big avoid note, but the other triad resolves it. Then on this you would have F melodic minor which would become F harmonic minor D flat and C. A little strange. Or how about actually let's do A flat and G. That's probably a little nicer. And we still want to play groups of 3, 3, 2 So that would be something like...
Here's how it would sound with a play along. Now, if I wanted to imply modes of double harmonic major, I would play, take the lower triad and name and add a major seventh to it. And you could do that for all of these. And this is going to be very exotic sounding, of course. Now you could do the same thing as before, only one of the things has four possible notes, for example E, G sharp, B, D sharp, so you have more notes to choose from for your groupings. You don't always have to stick that note in there either, that's always going to be the weirdest note of your grouping. So I'm not necessarily sticking to the three and two groupings that time in that quick example I just did. Okay, so now let's try the idea that I introduced last time of triad trios. So now you would have, and I really encourage to practice this, you know, the inside stuff first, of course. So I'm just crossing out major seventh and then adding a thing just for sake of getting through this quickly. So now what you might do if you have your group groupings of three, three, these aren't triplets, I'm just trying to group them real quick. Eighth notes. You could play, for example, three notes of F triad, three notes of E triad, and three notes of E flat triad. So simply, the most simply played would be, for example, starting here. if we can hear that with a play along. Unfortunately my computer speakers, my external ones broke so it's not very loud. How about now that I've kind of taught myself how it goes, why don't I try being a little bit looser with the groupings? Two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> playing after that. So anyhow, this is a way you can practice all kinds of things. Um, 
say you wanted to practice playing uh, uh, gradual modulations up a, a major third over um, major chords or something. So if you had C major 7, and this is a very like tenor sax player kind of thing, say that's the chord you're playing over, uh, you might want to play notes in C triad, then E triad, then A flat triad. Well, you could do three of this, three of that, two of that. And again, this is to teach you in the bar lines. If you want to play over the bar lines, it's good to make something that adds up to, this adds up to an even number. If you want to go over the bar lines, you need to add up to an odd number. And my handwriting is horrible. I have a doctorate, that's why. <laughs> uh, and then for dominance especially, cats like to play going up minor thirds. I don't know why I said cats, I don't usually use that word. <laughs> uh, for this, maybe since it's C7, you don't really need the C. Maybe a note or two of it if you want. It's in here too, the E. Uh, maybe three of that, three of that, two of that. So what you can always do is first, whatever form you're going to play over, make your little layout of the chords then write the combinations you want to try and then try them in this grouping and then once you get comfortable branch away from that grouping please because no one wants to hear over and over and over some of that goes a long way though it's pretty pretty nice sounding and effective um, so you can practice this for the augmented scales as well, which are made out of triad pairs, and the nine note augmented is made out of triad trios of augmented triads that are half step apart. So I think this is a very valuable way to practice things over changes. Anyhow, uh, that's the blog for this week. Thanks. Bye.